to using Ruby with Net for fun at the office. My name is Nate Field, and I'm a local Rubyist. My uh, Twitter handle is eBullet. And uh, a little bit about me: I've, uh, I used to work at an agency where I did iPhone development and Rails development. And one of the uh, one of the things I did there is I helped build one of the first karaoke games on iPhone. Uh, I now work at the Wasatch Front mobile listing service. And uh, we, we help people buy and sell homes and list them online. So the Kinect, for those of you that don't know what it is, is a control device for the Xbox 360. It came out in November. And uh, it's actually been the fastest selling electronic device ever. They've sold 8 million Kinects in like four months. And uh, the, one of the interesting things about it is Microsoft didn't actually develop the technology. They just licensed it from this other company called Framsense, who had uh, been pitching around for a while. I think they even pitched it to Apple. Uh, but Microsoft ended up seeing a use for this in, in video games. So the Kinect lets you control your video games with no controller. It's kind of like the Wii, but you just use your body, wave your arms, and your, uh, jump up and down. And, make a fool of yourself, and uh, the Kinect can actually take pictures of you while you're playing the game, so you can preserve those moments in time when you look like a moron. Uh, how does it work? There are two cameras on the front of the Kinect. One is an infrared camera, and one is an RGB camera, and there's also an infrared laser projector that's mounted to the side of them. And by projecting uh, micro patterns uh, using IR projector, uh, and using maps, as Zed uh, mentioned yesterday, you can calculate depth uh, on the fly using the IR camera. Um, both of the cameras have a maximum resolution of 640 by 480 and capture at 30 frames per second. If both of them are running, they actually saturate USB uh, 2.0. So this is what uh, an example of what the patterns look like. You can kind of see how they split out the um, the frame into different quadrants and uh, project patterns to towards the, the scene to kind of gauge depth. Live Free Next is the open source uh, driver that was basically created for the Connect, so you can use it on your machine, on your on your computer, and it was a uh, like as soon as the Connect was released, I think within like a week, somebody created a driver that, that let you interact with Connect and get data from it. It's released under dual license Apache GPL. You can download it at openconnect.org, or you can, if you're using a, a Mac, you can use MacWords or Brew and install there. So I'll <coughs> quickly show you a tool that comes with LibreNet. It's called GLView. And this actually takes, uh, takes the connect and uh, it, it shows you a, a live view, basically, of the of, uh, RGB camera and the IR projector, or IR camera. <coughs> and actually, uh, on the left, we're actually using, that, they actually use the depth uh, capability, calculated capabilities that are built into the connect to highlight areas that are closer uh, to the camera. You can actually uh, control the connect uh, from this program by hitting the uh, different number keys. You can change, like, the, you can't see it, but you can change the LED light. Um, we can actually change the camera mode. This mode right here that I really, oh here we go. So this is the infrared mode. I guess it's too far away to hit anything back there, but you can kind of see the patterns that it's projecting on my hand and uh, the, the little dots. It's really cool. So, go back to my presentation real quick. So that is uh, Live3Net and the GLU uh, demo uh, application that comes with it. So Scott came on GitHub thing, decided to make a, a wrapper for Ruby, uh, or for Libre Connect, uh, that you can use in Ruby. 
and it supports getting depth map from the connect as well as image data. You can flash LEDs, you can tilt the connect up and down. And unfortunately, I, I must have screwed up my install of the headers for the connect because I can't build the connect to be able to actually look at the code real quick. So you can see how easy it is to use it. Okay, so he requires uh, the connect to be module and initializes a, a frame buffer from the connect. And then he just loops through and, and grabs the depth, the depth data and the image data from the connect and puts it out to the screen. This example is a little bit more involved. He uses OpenGL to actually render uh, the depth frame buffer. And it's the same idea, basically. He loops over, uh, he loops over uh, the, the frame buffer from the connect and gets depth data repeatedly, and then he uses OpenGL to render. Okay, so that's that's loop connect. So OpenAI is actually a driver that was released by PrimeSense, the company that that created the technology that went into the Connect, and they released this driver I think in the beginning of December. Uh, it was after the loop connect uh, loop connect uh, initiative had begun, and it's the official driver released from PrimeSense. The NI stands for natural interaction, and it's this idea of uh, that you, you can interact with the technology you know, without having to have some sort of device that you touch. It's licensed under the LDPL, and I think the biggest reason to use this over the other driver is that you, uh, PrimeSense also has this middleware that you can use called Knight, which lets you do uh, skeletal um, data capture. Um, you can actually capture gestures that uh, somebody in front of the Connect is, is making. Like they have swipe gestures, they have waving gestures, they also have a flip gesture. And I think that this is like really exciting. That's really cool. It's like futuristic. And the problem I saw with the Knight middleware is that the, the headers are all C++. So it, it presented a bit of a problem as far as making a, a Ruby library for it. There is a free license key that you have to use in order to develop with this. But, uh, okay, so I, I want to show you something else that's really cool. This is built on the Knight middleware, and it's called o OS Skeleton. And it basically takes, uh, it's a binary that was built using the Knight middleware, and you can use it to capture skeletal data uh, from the Connect and broadcast it as OSC messages to uh, another program on your machine. So I want to try and do another demo here. Okay, so we, we fired the bus skeleton program. And I actually created a Ruby processing sketch that will take the OS skeleton data and render it to the screen. So I'll run that example in this other window. It takes a little bit of time to start up. Okay, so we have the, the Ruby sketch or the, the Ruby processing sketch running here in this example window, and I can kind of see the output from uh, OS Skeleton. In order to get OS Skeleton to actually recognize that I'm here, I actually have to make a, a pose and calibrate, let it calibrate uh, my skeleton.
this had happened. Okay. It should only take a few seconds, actually, so I'll try to stand closer. Praise to make God. <laughs>
uh, we can look at real quick. So uh, one of the things about Rice, Rice is actually really, uh, it's, it's a, uh, a great project, but it doesn't have any support for abstracting crops. So I actually had to use, uh, create a global function uh, so that I could actually call the crops and create them from C++. So if we run this, hopefully it doesn't have as hard of a time gesture that I created. <laughs> it's not. Okay, so it, it's initialized. Uh, we have the context, which is basically a frame buffer for the connect. Uh, I'm just printing out the class name here and the resolution of the depth map. So I step back over here in front of the connect and I actually wave. I don't know if you can read that, but it's <laughs> saying hi to me. And uh, so, anyways, that's that's uh, that's Renect uh, right now. I, I, if anyone has any uh, more experience than me with C plus plus and building things with Rice, I'd really like to work with you if you have an interest in uh, helping to make this a better library. Um, let's see if there's anything else on my slides. Oh yeah, so the mocap thing. Another reason I decided not to do that is because somebody has already built a really good program to do that with the Connect. It's called Breckle. And this guy, uh, Breckle, he, he does motion capture for a living. And he built this on the side. It's basically just uh, it's a Windows program. Unfortunately, it's not open source. But you can use it to capture skeletal animation data in real time and export it to Autodesk. Or uh, you can actually import it into Blender if, if you like Blender. So I figured that was a problem that was already solved. All right, thanks uh, for having me. Anyone have any questions? Thank you very much. <laughs>